In this video, we will be setting up the deployment pipelines in Power BI. So we'll be using Power BI report that will be uh, promoting from dev to UAT in production. Uh, this is what our uh, flow will look like. Uh, let's first go and go to our workspaces. I've got a Power BI dev, UAT and prod. And uh, let's go ahead and have a look what our dev looks like. There, are couple, one, there is one report. And one semantic model this is this is our financial report and the financial reports semantic model so first we will be creating our deployment pipeline before we do that let, let me quickly show you what our semantic model looks like what's the data source this is our data source because obviously when you want to do a deployment pipeline, you will need to have deployment rules because your dev environment will talk to your dev uh, data source, but your uh, UAT and prod will talk to the you know corresponding UAT and prod. So let's go ahead and uh, create our deployment pipeline. Let's call our pipeline PBI underscore CICD. Next and you can customize your stages uh, this is fine for me dev test and production you can add more if you need and click create so if you see you need to choose a workspace to assign to this stage uh, on the left most is my dev then the uat and then the prod then i will assign the workspace and if you Click this button, it will scroll towards the right. And as I keep doing that, I will see the semantic model and the report in our Power BI dev workspace. I'll do the same, uh, assign workspace for the UAT and production. That's all done. Uh, once done, you can see it has already done a compare and if you see development and test have a difference uh, it is marked by that yellow uh, you know cyclic uh, and uh, orange button uh, and on in between test and production there is everything green a green circle a green uh, cyclic uh, you know uh, icon saying that they are in sync let me open a new tab Yep, this is just, you know, uh, open the report and show the uh, differences after deployment. So as you can see, uh, there is a difference between the dev and UAT because right now our UAT in uh, workspace does not have any uh, reports. It's an empty uh, workspace and same as our production. Both are empty. That's why you can see there is no difference between UAT and production but there is a difference between dev and UAT. Let's, uh, if you see this button, it can be used to compare the environments and you can see the difference is the report and the financial report semantic model. And you can see it says a plus sign with new. It's not a change, but it will be created uh, in our UAT environment as it does not exist. So we are satisfied, let's deploy you can do it from here or you can see more select or you can select related so if there are multiple uh, items it will select all related ones uh, click deploy so currently our uh, dev environment uh, uh, is getting synced into UAT so the reports that we have in dev will now get deployed in UAT and now you can see dev and UAT are or the test are in sync but production is now out of sync and if you do the comparison the same reports that we just deployed is not available in production uh, we can go ahead and do the same add a note uh, whatever you know message you want to have it because this can be seen in the deployment history so if you have any ticket number or anything you can do that 
so that is in progress once done all our environments should be in sync as you can see everything is now in sync uh, let's go and have a quick look in our report let's go to production uh, you can see the reports are now available and if you go to the semantic model obviously uh, it is pointing to a different the dev uh, data source so you will need to change that this is currently pointing to the sql endpoint of a lake house if you want to change that during deployment you can have deployment rules you'll have to do the same for the uat That looks all right but again this is currently pointing to the dev SQL endpoint and we would like to change that and how you do the change how you make the change that's uh, using the deployment rules and I'll show you how to do that if you see this icon this trigger icon with a plus sign if you click on that you'll be able to see data source rules and you will add a rule this is for the data sources click the database from and this is our sources the sql endpoint in the dev workspace we want to change that to the uat workspace Our data sources are in our data engineering uh, workspaces. So I've tried to create a, an isolation of data engineering and Power BI. So this is where we need to change that. Let me go to the U80 data engineering workspace. Let me go back to my sql endpoint and grab the connection string for my uat data source my uat lakehouse sql endpoint if you click on the gear icon you should be able to see the connection string I'll copy that and paste it in a notepad so I can show you the difference because they look very much the same but there is a mi minor difference between your SQL endpoint. Let's copy that and go back to our deployment pipeline, deployment rules. we can now change the server that's the sql endpoint we had just copied so i will select this and get the new endpoint the uat sql endpoint and paste that as you can see uh, there is a difference between the dev and the uat so i'll copy the uat one and paste it here and that's it i'll save it so we have uh, added a deployment rule once you add the deployment rule and there will be an automatic comparison and it will say that there is a change and you can see there is a change in the semantic model and you will need to run the deployment again once this is done uh, there will be a comparison again and UAT and production are out of sync so we'll need to do the same for the production semantic model we'll need to change the data source settings 
you will do the same you will go back to your data source for your production and add a deployment rule for production data source rules add a rule select your server or the database add other and then i'll just change the server name i'll go and grab my data engineering production sql endpoint click on the gear icon and copy the connection string go back and paste it here click save and run the pipeline again let's do the deployment again that is sorted so it's like a parameter a parameterized deployment where the data source will be different in your different environments and that's taken care by these deployment rules so this is our dev report and if you see the data source settings it's different from what we had in production i'll quickly show you a quick comparison this is just to show that the deployment worked and we have changed the data source settings successfully taken a screenshot I will go to the UAT let's head back to our UAT the semantic model and we'll go to the settings to see our data source and if I try to compare it with dev you can already see that it has changed successfully but we will need to re-enter the credentials yep so it has changed successfully they are very similar so you'll have to properly have a look because the hashing uh, the the ID is very much similar there is a slight change at the end so you need to be very careful with that but yes so this is done for UAT we'll need to do the same with production you'll need to re-enter the credentials for your production as well this is production go to settings of our semantic model Quick comparison uh, looks good it is it has changed which is exactly what we wanted so we should now be able to edit the credentials it's always recommended to use service principles that's the best practice but for this video I'm just using the OAuth 2 this is done so our reports are now in sync but one thing uh, that you will need to do is you will need to refresh the data set otherwise your reports will have these errors and if you click on it it will say that the expression reference column blah 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 uh, hold any data does not hold any data it needs to be recalculated or refreshed so yeah that's need to be refreshed 
So let's go ahead and refresh the data set. I'll go back to my semantic model or previously known as data set. I'll refresh it from here. Once this refresh is done, the report should have data in it. It should take a couple of seconds. <coughs> that is done so yeah that report should be running fine now so i hope this video was useful please do subscribe and share if you found this helpful thanks a lot bye bye